Hey friends, this is Jim at J. DeShane Smoking Pipes, and I'm just going to do a quick VR for James Pottsville Piper. And uh, he had a, a video earlier today where he asked a couple of questions on pipes, and I was trying to type in an answer to him, but man, it's going to be about three or four paragraphs, so I thought I'd do a quick VR and shout out for him. Uh, James, you asked about uh, a couple of different things. Um, you asked about clean, cleaning the pipes and separating the stem from the shank. You also asked about uh, bowl sizes and shapes, things like that. First, uh, for cleaning a pipe, a couple of older tobacconists are who I learned from, and what they always preached was you, you don't pull the stem off the shank unless you plan on doing a deep cleaning on a pipe. And the only time you need to do a deep, deep cleaning on a pipe is if it's tasting sour, okay? If it is tasting sour, you're gonna need to do something with it and uh, clean it up. But other than that, when you go to clean your pipe, when you're done smoking it, take your pipe, take a tool, loosen up the ash and tobacco inside the bowl, okay? So it's all in there, it's all loosened up, it's all ready to come out. Put your palm over the top of it, take it and shake it three or four times. Okay, now this is gonna do two things. When you dump it out, you look inside there and the bowl is almost going to look dry because there's going to be a light, very, very light coat of, of white ash that's coating the whole bowl, even the bottom. So what that does is it coats the bowl, makes it help, helps it dry out, and it also it promotes the cake inside the pipe. So when you get a new pipe, you, that's one thing you really want to make sure you do for at least the first 10 smokes. Loosen up the tobacco and ash and dottle in the bottom, shake it up, dump it out, quick blow, make sure everything's out of there. It's going to be good for the cake and cleaning it out. After you do that, take a pipe cleaner. I always take it and get the lint off of it, otherwise you end up with it down in the stem and the shank and sometimes and it has happened to me, you go to light up a pipe and you're like, why is this thing not drawing worth a darn? Well, you got lint in there, so you gotta poke it out. But you take the pipe after you've dumped the tobacco chamber, feed your pipe cleaner through the button end and push it in a couple of times. And when you pull it out, make sure you go side to side to clean out the fan inside the uh, stem, okay? Once you've done that a couple of times, run it till it just comes into the bowl. Do that two or three times so the pipe cleaner starts to come out clean, okay? Last time you do it, you run it through there, you get it to come out, and it's looking pretty darn clean, you're done. Take it, gently blow into it. That way you make sure if there was some linen there, you blew it out. Anything that was loosening, you blew out into the bowl. Most of it will probably blow out of the bowl. You can take it and just tap it a couple of times, holding it by the shank, not the stem. A lot of people will take it by the stem and they'll bang it on a cork, they'll bang it on their shoe, they'll bang it on the tire of the car to knock the tobacco out, and you're putting a lot of stress on that tenon. Odds are, sooner or later, you're going to break that tenon and break the stem off. Always hold it by the shank. Hit it a couple of times, make sure there's nothing in there. Put it in the pipe rack and let it dry for a couple of days. Good to go. You go to smoke it, tastes kind of sour in your mouth. You're smoking that bowl and you're thinking, man, it really isn't tasting the way it should. Now it's time for a deep cleaning. Now you take out, uh, I use Everclear. You can use vodka, you can use whiskey, whatever you like. Um, the Everclear really works good. Just be careful with it because if you have a smooth pipe and you get the Everclear on that smooth pipe, it's going to take the wax off of it and make it look dull. If you get it all over your stem, it's going to make the stem look dull. You need to go to your local shop and have them buff it up for you. But take it, dip it into the Everclear, and separate the stem. And when you separate your stem, don't pull it, just pull it straight out. It's a good idea to always unscrew it out, screw it back in, and it, it'll it stay snug for you if you do that. And once you take it apart, you can use the, the bristly uh, pipe cleaners, or you can get some small bristle brushes dip it in the Everclear, clean it out real good, regular pipe cleaners through there on the stem and the stumel, and it'll clean it out nice. You don't need to do your bowl unless you've got something ghosting inside of it. 
Once you get it all cleaned out, you can put it back together, but be careful because when you put the Everclear through there, it's going to swell the wood. The moisture will swell, swell the wood. You put it in there, put it back together, and let it dry for a couple of days before you smoke it. It tastes brand new. If you have a pipe and your fit is loose for some reason, pipe makers make them as tight as we can get them without busting the shank but you, you have to be careful because we're worried about with the change in climate and humidity it, it can make it where it's a loose fit that's one thing we always worry about as pipe makers if you have one with a loose fit there's a few things you can do you can put a little beeswax on that tenon screw it back in it'll be nice and snug if it's not real loose but it's kind of loose you can just take a pipe cleaner you can dip it in some water or you can spit on it Put it inside the mortise, just get the mortise wet, screw your stem in there, and it'll be tight and ready to smoke. No problem. Ready to go. There's a couple of things you can do. Now, you also asked about some of your pipes that didn't smoke well. First, let's tackle the one you got from Boswell's that was kind of pointed at the bottom. You see there's tobacco in the bottom that's not smoking. Odds are your draft hole is high into the chamber. So it's above where that tobacco is, so it's not gonna burn. You'll suck ash before you burn that tobacco at the bottom. If that's the case, there's a quick fix for it. You make up some pipe mud. You'll take a little bit of uh, cigar ash and put it in a paper bowl or paper plate. Put just a little bit of water with it, mix it up into a paste, okay? Take that paste, put it in the bottom of the bowl. Okay, and build it up to where it's just below or right at the draft hole. Once you get it right at the draft hole, take your pipe cleaner with, with the stem off. This pipe is three and a half years old, and you see how I have to screw that stem in and out. Okay, so it's still tight. It'll stay tight if you screw it in and out, and only break it when you need to do a deep cleaning on the pipe. It helps a lot. But with that, that pipe mud, get it in the bottom, fill it up, so it's and, and you don't want it flat across. If you can, you want to kind of dome it a little bit or put a little indentation in it. But what you can do is you do it with the pipe cleaner. Build it up to the draft hole, take your pipe cleaner, put it through the shank, and then you run it right to the edge there, and then right on top and through that, as you come into the bowl, you probably can't see it here. It's too dark. But... You'll see it come into the, the the pipe mud you have there, and it'll put a little a little bit of a trough into it to the center of the tobacco chamber. That's what you want. Let it dry. When you let it dry, it's gonna probably take. I would let it dry two or three days, honestly, and it'll it'll get hard as a rock, and just leave it there. Then you can pack a bowl, and you can smoke it. And it'll smoke better and it'll smoke the, the tobacco right on down to the draft hole and you won't have any dottle and, and tobacco below it anymore so that should take care of that problem you can also do that trick with corn cobs people buy stuff for doing this and you don't have to all you need to do is smoke a cigar save an inch of ash put a little water with it mix it up throw it down in in the bowl in a, a corn cob and fill in the area from where the uh, the uh, piece of, of wood comes into the corn cob there. Pack it down on the sides around there and out in front. Run the pipe cleaner through there and it'll be just like a regular bottom of a pipe and the corn cob will smoke a lot better. Another little trick. Now, the way tobacco chambers are drilled, there's a couple of different shapes. One's more of a U shape and then there's one they call a parabolic or more of an egg corn shape where it comes down into a point. I use both type, types of drill bits, and it depends on what size the tobacco chamber is, what's the shape of the pipe, and also what you're going to be smoking out of it. Because every pipe will smoke one or two tobaccos very well. It'll smoke quite a few tobaccos pretty good, and there'll be some tobaccos that you just can't smoke in it. Okay, so rule of thumb, taller, thinner better for flakes, better for Virginias. I find that with a acorn shaped drill bit where it comes down into a point and it's taller and narrower with a, um, 
11 sixteenths or three quarter bit, and you're looking at probably inch and three quarters to two inch tobacco chamber depth is fantastic for smoking flake out of. And it works really well for smoking Virginias. Doesn't smoke Englishes that well, but it will smoke the English blends. You have U-shaped bits. Usually with a U-shaped bit, you're going for a little bit larger diameter tobacco chamber. And that is better for smoking English and Balkan blends. The pipe you bought for me was a pot. It had a uh, tobacco chamber of almost one inch in diameter. It was a shorter chamber. I think it was like an inch and a quarter. And it was a U-shape. All that together tells me right off the bat, I know that is going to smoke English blends and Balkan blends better than it will smoke Virginia's or uh, aromatics. If you want something that's going to smoke everything good, then you're looking for something more like a three quarter inch cha chamber, U shaped for the drill bit, and you're looking for inch and a half to inch and three quarters. That will be an all around good size and tobacco chamber that will go ahead and allow you to smoke any kind of tobacco out of it. When you are buying a pipe, especially off the internet, get the d dimensions of the tobacco chamber because that's going to tell you if it's going to smoke the tobacco that that you like well. So, yes, the way the pipe is drilled has a, a, a big bearing on what, what tobaccos you're going to like. When you get a pipe, it's your job to find a tobacco that smokes really good in it. It's a challenge. And it's something you can you can check out. You'll, you'll know going in, hey, I like a big bowls. This bowl is seven-eighths of an inch in diameter. It's U-shape, and it's two inches deep. Well, odds are right there you know it's going to smoke in English well. Might smoke Virginia as well. Might might smoke flake okay. Probably going to be a little big for, for aromatics because they're going to get hot as you smoke it on down. But that's not the only thing you have to think about. Another thing is the drilling on the pipe, the draft hole. What's the shank drilled at? Is it drilled at three millimeter, three and a half millimeter, four millimeters? You know, a lot of the, the independent pipe makers, artisan pipe makers, have open draws all the way through their pipes. That's because they're drilling four millimeter all the way through. And when they do that, with that open draw, it really promotes smoking an English blend and Balkan blends. They smoke great in it, especially for me. I, I find it smokes great if you drill it wide open all the way through. When it comes to flakes or aromatics, it's going to be kind of wide open. It's going to smoke a little fast, a little hot, probably burn your mouth. The way I drill my pipes, I drill it different when I go through. Mine's drilled more like a Costello, where when you smoke it, it feels wide open, but there is a little bit of resistance when you smoke it, and that has to do with the way I, I drill mine and the way I cut my, my uh, fans in at the button, okay? It's taken me a few years to figure it out, but when I the way I drill mine, they smoke any kind of tobacco well. That's because it has a little bit of resistance, but it's still open. It's still comfortable for you to draw through, but if you're going to smoke a flake or a Virginia, you want a little bit of resistance there and it helps you to smoke it a little bit slower. When it's wide open and you're getting a lot of smoke, it gets hot. You get more steam in the mouth, burn the tongue a little bit more. So, But it, it's important as a pipe smoker to look at the pipes you have that you really like and see what size the, the chambers are and how they're drilled. So you know for those kinds of tobaccos that smoke well in those pipes in the future, you're looking for that same kind of dimensions. If you have pipes that don't smoke well, you're thinking about selling them or anything, well, hey, before you sell them, take a look at them. Are they, are they a real big open tobacco chamber? You know, is it U, drilled kind of like a U-shape and really large in diameter, like a 7 8 inch diameter? Maybe larger, maybe 1 inch? Try Balkan and English blends out of them. You have a smaller pipe that you really like because it's a nice pocket pipe. It's really small, but you're more into English blends. Try a Balkan blend. Try uh, some Virginias or maybe an aromatic like uh, Drew Estate's Toasted Black Cavendish. 
in the smaller chamber and it might smoke better for you and it's it's kind of fun and it's it's something you can do try all kinds of different tobaccos in the pipe and find out what works best for that pipe write it down and write down the, the dimensions of the chambers and stuff and it's going to help you in the future when you go to buy pipes if you see one that you really like that a, a artisan pipe makers made but it has the wrong size chamber contact that that maker and say hey i really love that pipe but can you take a commission can you make it and make it a little bit different and give them the dimensions you want as a pipe maker that's one thing i really want to know what do you like to smoke out of the pipe virginia blends uh, Balkan blends, English blends, aromatics, because that's going to help me decide what size chamber I'm going to put in into the, the tobacco chamber into the pipe. And then from there, you can move on to shape of the pipe and also uh, the finish of the pipe, smooth, rusticated, blasted, colors, things of that nature. Number one thing on a, on a good pipe is engineering. Okay, that's the number one thing. If it's engineered correctly, it's going to smoke good. Okay, and to me, pipes are tools. They're meant for smoking, and I take pride in making my pipes smoke good. All of my pipes smoke well. So think about it in the future. You're going to buy a new pipe. You see one you really love. You love the look of it and the feel of it. you got to have it. Take another look at that tobacco chamber. See what it looks like. See what size it is and see if it's going to work for you. If you've just got to have that pipe, buy the pipe, and then start searching for a tobacco that smokes really good in it. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, I hope this helps you, James. If you have more questions, just shoot them to me, and we can talk about it. Thanks, buddy. Bye.